Hello, everyone. I think this is working. Yes. So my topic today is growing pains of a WordPress agency. My name is Jaakko Alajoki, and I'm a CTO at Evermade. I'm also one of the founder, founders of the company and also a full stack developer. So this presentation will be about like from my point of view. So as a developer point of view of, of growing. Um, let's start from the beginning. 2011, we founded the company. Back then we had four guys and two developers. Today we have 20 people and 10 developers. So, and like most of the growth has happened in past three years. So it is pretty obvious that things are not as they used to be when we were pretty small. And we had had a lot of issues, and not a lot of but issues, and we have also found some solutions to that as well. So I hope that this presentation gives some ideas to if someone is having something similar. And these are based on my experience, but also from the feedback I got from our team. So rule number one, well, number one is focus. When we started the company, we did basically everything from photography to print design to websites to USB drivers. And after two years of doing that, we decided that, wait a minute, this is not the best way to do it. So we decided to focus on marketing websites built on WordPress. And basically, immediately after that decision, we started to grow. So like focusing has been one of the biggest thing we have done like in the past. And everyone knows that, hey, focus is important. Like we knew it, but it's still pretty difficult to do in real life. Like you have already have clients, you need to say no to some of them. You need to say no to the new business. And, and that's actually pretty difficult. So when we started to hire more developers, we soon realized that everyone was working in their own way. Like every project was started from scratch and a lot of different tools are used. And that's pretty stupid. Like it's a waste of money and a waste of resources. You cannot like swap developers between projects. Maintaining is, is very difficult. So like we defined our way of working, like how should we do stuff? And for us, it was just enough to create some kind of boilerplates. So we have a like a base project, base theme, like base everything. So when you start working, you take the base and that kind of already guides you to the right direction. And what we also did, like we had a lot of issues with different kind of development environments. So we decided that we all need to have like equal uh, development environment. So nowadays, like all of our developers have a uh, virtual machine on a cloud and it's very heavily, our environment is very heavily built on Docker and everyone is using exactly the same environment. And like if someone is having an issue, I can just log in to his machine and like help him immediately. And if you are having an issue on, on some people, we know that others are going to have the same issue. So like having a unified development environment has saved a lot of time in the past. So the next problem is when we have all that, how to share the knowledge like inside the team. If you have two people, you can just sit together and discuss. But when you have 10 people, it's not enough. We have people working remotely and, and that kind of stuff. So how do we make sure that everyone knows like what is the way our way of working? Of course, documentation is important. 
And that doesn't mean anything super heavy, because like there's a lot of people who don't like to read documentation. So we have uh, pretty good readme files for all of our tools. And that has been, for this point, has been enough documentation. We also have these developer meetings. So once in a while, we gather together all, all developers in our team and we sit down and usually like one or two hours and discuss about changes we have made to our internal tools and stuff. What I've noticed that we cannot make decisions on developer meetings. Like it's too many people for making actual decisions. We are making decisions in smaller groups, but once in a while we sit together and share that knowledge. We also have, of course, we have retrospective of projects, but we also have this development review after projects where we sit down with the, like usually me, project team, and some external guy and discuss about how the project went from like the development point of view and we make sure that all our guidelines are followed and also like for me it's a moment when I can gather the feedback from individuals like how our tools are working. And then how not to lose freedom because like we are saying that hey Come to Evermade, you can do whatever you want. But at the same time, we have this pretty strict way of doing projects. So how do we balance between being free and, and being strict? I don't know. Like, I don't know how to define it, but we are trying not to be too strict. We have the base, but you can do the, like a lot of solution by yourself. Also, you need to remember that your stuff is never ready. So, like, there's always ideas coming in, like new tools you should start to use, and new, like, libraries and plugins and that kind of stuff. So, you need to have some kind of process of getting those ideas in and applying those to your workflow so that everyone else can use them as well. That's maybe one of the biggest issues we're having. Like, we are in a hectic project business, deadlines coming in, like new projects starting, and uh, profit margins are not huge, but still we need to find the time for internal development from somewhere. And like that is the maybe number one topic we are discussing with our team that hey we need to do this but we never had time to do this and I think there's no solution for that since the nature of the business we are in but what we are trying to do we are trying to include the work into our budgets so if we have some internal like development idea we're trying to think if there's some project where we can actually like we can spend that budget if that's related to that project so that usually helps helps us to move forward also like you need to consider your internal work as work so it needs to be planned estimated scheduled which make it like easier to everyone understand that, that okay we have the slot there, and we have the slot there, so we can use that for internal development. Also, we are usually, like, because summertime is, for example, is very quiet, so we can use that time for internal stuff. So we have usually a long backlog of things we would like to do. And when, during July, when it's very quiet, but we still have guys at the office, we can work on the internal stuff stuff then and sometimes like it's very difficult to define any business goals for your internal internal work for example like refactoring your css based libraries like it's very hard to define what is the business value of that work but 
it's still something you need to do. That's a tough one. Um, I've interviewed like hundreds of people and I've realized that like developers in general are hard to find. But especially I think WordPress developers are very difficult to find. And I think this is because of the nature of the WordPress. It's not a like software development platform. It's a CMS made with PHP. And, but at the same time, like in your projects, you need full stack skills, especially on a complex projects. And I've noticed that many like real developer don't want to work with WordPress. And I think like because there's already a short shortage of developers that narrows down the possible candidates to very low. Like hopefully, unfortunately, WordPress is progressing nicely and it's getting more popular. So like, I have a feeling that this is getting better. It has, has got better in the past, but it's still difficult. And this is actually my last slide. And this is kind of open thing <laughs> floating here. So like, at, as I said, we have 10 developers at the moment. Right now, our, our hierarchy is completely flat. And we know that it's not enough. Like after some point, there needs to be some structure. Um, I don't know what it is, <laughs> but I know that we're going to have that issue at some point, And we need to solve this somehow. But that's something like, like if you have any ideas how you have done this in your company, just come and grab my shirt and let's discuss about this. <laughs> Sam, stop laughing. <laughs> okay, that was my last slide. Uh, I'm going to write a blog post about this stuff and put that into my blog there. So, and also these slides will be available and I will be here the whole day. So if you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask. Thanks.